Hey everybody, it's Bud with Xmode bringing you Quick Tip Thursdays. So in our last video, we went in and went through all the settings that were needed for GoPro in order to make sure that you get that awesome, super ooey gooey cinematic style that you're looking for. But there's also one other factor you have to pay attention to, and that's gonna be the shot moves, your gimbal, uh, gimbal locations, how you do your shots, how you shoot your shots, how you plan your shots, and that's what we're gonna get into today. All right, so what kind of gimbal do you need? Well, there's plenty out there to choose from. You can either go get one of the cheap ones that are from China, you can get an Evo gimbal, which works really well, or you can get one of the, uh, the Karma Grips from GoPro itself. So today we're gonna talk about the Karma Grip because it's just kind of the easiest one to kind of work with and probably one of the more popular ones for, for the audience. So this is it right here. This is our uh, Karma Grip. And attached to the Karma Grip we have a uh, a selfie stick that's on there and then clamped to it is your phone that you can use as a viewfinder. And so this allows you to be able to turn this and extend it out, get it really close and awesomely up there. And there you go, right? And so this allows you to do several different things. This allows you to extend that boom and get it down way low to get those low walking shots or it allows you to go way high or, or, or to the side or any, any, any a combination of different methods you can use with this with this setup. And so if you don't have the selfie stick, no big deal. You can still do it with just the Karma Grip. It works just fine. Uh, but you just need to be, be mindful and think through what shots you wanna take. So the first move you want to look at is going to be the low follow shots, and that's when you take the you take your gimbal and you get it really low to the ground and you start following somebody's footsteps. And usually the way you do that is you have to do a ninja walk, and so it's always your heel to toe, heel to toe, doing it very gently to prevent the shake from your arm up and down. Now the gimbal will always stabilize the footage. But what it won't do is it can't do any elevation uh, stabilization. So that's where the ninja walk comes into play. So the softer and, and more gentle you can walk following that individual, the more crisp and clean that shot's gonna look. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that shot. All right, so next up we have the walk behind shot. Now, what is the walk behind shot and what is that all about? Well, as a viewer, you kind of want to see what the subject sees, right? And so by having that walk behind shot, you can see the subject and you can see everything that they see. And so that gives a great comprehensive story to your shot. And so it shows them this awesome scene or this awesome location that you want to view. And it put, keeps them in perspective while showing the audience what it is they see. Now you wanna make sure when you do that shot that you stay in tight and you keep it about shoulder, mid length, uh, to the head, and then just kinda of gracefully just follow them and try to keep them as close in frame as you can. Still do the ninja walk, it's still important because you don't wanna be doing this as you're walking. Even though it may be completely unintentional, you'll see it will come up in, in post when you go to look at it. So keep that in mind. Now another great gimbal shot is the circle around shot. Now these things are great when you slow them down in slow-mo. So make sure that when you do this, that you do this in a, either in 120 FPS or 240 FPS, some way where you can actually get that, uh, get that nice buttery just circle around shot. And so with GoPro, just make sure that uh, you follow the 180 rule. So if, if, you're, if you're doing 240 frames a second, try to keep your shutter speed double that amount, okay? So you're gonna want 480 or somewhere in that range, close to that range in order to get the proper amount of motion blur to be able to get that nice cinematic shot of you circling around the subject. And if it's not set up right from the shutter uh, position, then what you'll have to do in post is you'll have to introduce motion blur in post in order to keep it from looking very blocky and not very smooth and just bleh. 
The dolly forward backward shot, that's pretty simple. There's really not a lot to it. It looks really neat because it introduces the viewer to the environment as well. And so you have the environment and if you dolly in, then you're focusing in on the on the subject or you can do the opposite where you have the subject in full frame and you dolly back in order to introduce the environment to the viewer that way. Uh, either way works really well. It just depends on how you want to tell your story. So. Just be sure that when you do it, you can start high uh, into, the, into the face and kind of come down and kind of keep the whole body in perspective and that works really well. Uh, but try not to go straight out because if you do, you'll get a lot of sky, unless that's what you're looking for. If that's what you're looking for, that's great. But if you're trying to keep the entire subject in frame, you're gonna wanna dolly down a little bit while you're, while you're going backwards or going forwards, you wanna go up a little bit. So just, you know, keep that in mind. All right, so next is our lateral follow shot. And that's just simply a side shot following the subject. And so what you can do is you can do it of the face, you can do it of the legs, you can do it of the feet. And it's always good to try to do it in slow motion because it really like pops a lot more as they're just kind of flowing through the environment. And as you're watching that, it's a great way to introduce your, your subject. Now the best way to introduce your subject and actually show who the subject is, is to do a leading shot. And so the leading shot is basically what you see right here, this is, this right here is a leading shot. And what you do with that leading shot is that's how you introduce the subject to the viewer. And it will show the environment behind, but it really should be with proper depth of field, should be a little bit blurry if not, if you don't, with a GoPro it may not be, but um, just something to think about uh, it, it, how you actually wanna identify and get people to look and focus at the face. And so make sure with the leading shot that they are still moving, still walking. So you're following and you're walking backwards and you make sure that one, you don't trip over anything and break your damage yourself or your camera. And so if you have somebody that's there that's available to help, make sure that they kind of, you know, just grab your shirt or something, just a way to lead, but lead you. That way you can walk backwards gently, still focus on your camera movements, still focus on your subject and make sure that you're not gonna trip and fall. So just keep that in mind. Safety first, people. Safety first. Oh, I almost forgot, with that leading shot, make sure that you have the subject look into the camera. It's always a great way to introduce that subject by actually having him give eye contact to the viewer. So just keep that in mind. So now that we have all these awesome little gimbal movements all defined and figured out, the best way to do these is to actually combine them together. And so the way you do that is you can do just something simple, such as a lateral to walk behind shot that we did over next to the docks at the lake. So you can you can do that lateral shot where you follow them on the side and then they take a turn and that immediately turns that right into a follow shot and you just kind of follow them in that way. Um, you can also do a um, a lateral to a dolly, or you can do all kinds of different things. The, the really, that's where the true creativity comes into play, and that's where you, as a creative, can do better by combining these different gimbal movements and coming up with things and ideas that haven't really been uh, done before, or say they have been done, but you're gonna put your own little spin on it, and that's what makes filmmaking so cool, is that you have the ability to do that stuff. You have the ability to be creative. So there you go, that's it, that's all it takes. We are super happy that you took the time to watch our video. If you have something you wanna show us, comment section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, you gotta subscribe, and hit the bell, that way you know when I push out the next video. Peace.